Hello, and welcome to section 6.4 uh, about uh, solving equations that have exponents involved and um, also some more about exponential functions. Um, but mostly this is going to be about solving equations that have an exponential function on one side. This first exercise is basically a drill. Uh, hopefully you know how to do these. This is really kind of an arithmetic practice because uh, all of these thing, all of these results here are things you should sort of have memorized. You should sort of know. Um, the one thing you might not understand at the beginning if you were doing badly in section G in chapter 4 and 6.1 is that 2 to the negative 2 means the same thing as 1 over 2 to the 2, which is 1 over 4. So I'll, I'll give you that one. And then 2 to the negative 1 just means 1 over 2 to the 1, which is just 1 half, or 0 0.5. So uh, in 2 to the 0, anything to the power of 0 is just 1. The rest of these uh, you should definitely be able to do. I'll give you a moment here to pause it uh, while I whistle the song. And there's your answers to check. If you need to pause it for a moment while you check it, go ahead. But um, this was a good drill to notice which ones of these do you not have memorized. Hopefully you have a lot of these memorized. Um, but these are ones you should you should know. Like if, if I were to ask you something like 3 to the what power is 81? Uh, for example, you should be able to say, oh, that's going to be 4. Um, and that's a skill you're going to need to use for some of these problems. And it's also going to be an important skill for Chapter 7 when we get into logarithms. You're going to be identifying the exponent uh, there a lot. And you kind of have to have some of them memorized. So the more arithmetic practice like this that you get with that, the more of that you'll have memorized. So anyways, let's go on to example 1 here. Uh, where we want to solve some equations, meaning find the value of x that makes this true. So 3 to what power is 243? Well, let's look right over here. 3 to the power 5 is 243. So that means x is 5. Uh, okay, so this one's a little bit more complicated because we have multiplication in addition to just the exponent. It's not just 10 to the x equals a number. We also have the times 4. Uh, so to undo that, you can do the thing you normally do to undo multiplication and just divide both sides by 4. And that's going to give you, because that's just 4 times something, it just cancels out, and you get 10 to the power x equals 0 0.001. All right, so now let's see. This is where you're going to have to, you might need to make some guesses and check it with your calculator. Um, you might need to make a little table, sort of like filling in the blanks with like what we did here. Um, so one thing is 10 to the power negative 1, you know, is 1 over 10, which as a decimal is 0 0.1 and 10 to the power negative 2 is 1 over 10 squared, which is 1 over 100, which is 0 0.01. Um, now 10 to the negative 3 is going to be 1 over 10 cubed, and if you're not sure how it works, uh, you could do it with a calculator, you'll get 0 0.001. Uh, and you might notice the pattern, which is that when you have that negative 3 exponent, that means if you started from just 1, you're going to move the decimal place over 3 times. I wrote an extra 0 here. Whoops. Okay. Let me try that again. This is supposed to be 0 0.001. So, so if it were just 1, and then you move the decimal place over three times you'd get the answer just like with 
10 to the negative 2, if you started at 1, you get 10 to the 0. And that also works with like 10 to the 0. 10 to the 0 is just 1, right? Because, hey, the decimal place is already there. You move it 0 places from there. And 10 to the 1, in this case, you move it in the other direction. Like if you start with a 1 and then you move the decimal place over 1, so you get 10. Okay, so anyways, that's an arithmetic that uh, arithmetic trick that maybe you already knew, but it's a handy one. Uh, and it tells you that in this case, the result is the solution of this equation is x equals negative 3. All right, um, how about this one? This one's getting a little bit more complicated. Uh, you might not know how to see, like, what is the exponent of 5 that gives you this? But the trick is that you have 125 in the denominator. And, oh, hey, 125 is 5 to the power thir 3. So it's a good thing you just practiced that, right? So I'm going to use that fact and rewrite this as 5 to the power x on the left. But the right, I'm going to write it as the square root of 5 to the power 3. And so how does that help you? Well, now they both have a 5 at least, so that's getting somewhere. The, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the square root and also write that as an exponent because I want to just turn this whole thing on the right into just 5 to a power because if we can, if we can do some steps that make it look like this is just 5 to the x equals... 5 to some power, then, hey, those powers must be the same. So, so that's the goal here, is to get it to look like 5 to just some power on the right side. So, so that's what I want to do, is take, deal with the fraction and the square root, and what does that turn into with exponents? So the left is still 5 to the power x. The square root is the same thing as the... 5 to the power 3 all to the power 1 half. And you could combine that into just 5 to the power 3 over 2 in the bottom. Oops. My handwriting, writing 5s is really messy. After all these years of writing 5s, they still come out looking weird. Um, anyways, so, and, and that's because when you have a power raised to a power, you can multiply them. Well, that's one of those exponent rules. Okay, now what if I don't want to write this as a fraction? What if I don't want it to be 1 over that? What if I just want to have the 5 in the top of the fraction? Well, if you bring it to the top, it means you have a negative exponent. So that's going to be 5 to the power x equals 5 to the power negative 3 over 2. Um, all right, so now at this stage, you have 5 to the power x and 5 to the power negative 3 over 2. What is the value of x that makes these the same? That's what you're trying to do when you solve an equation, right? In this case, hopefully it's pretty clear that x is negative 3 over 2. that will make both sides of this equation 5 to the power negative 3 over 2. Okay, now let's look at part D here. We have 3 to the power m and 9 to the power 2m plus 1. So this is going to be the same idea that we're going to try to write the, the, the goal or the the technique we're going to use is write the left side as 3 to a power and the right side as 3 to some other power. And if you can do that, then those exponents must be the same. That's the, whatever value of m makes those, those exponents the same is going to make both sides of the equation equal, which is the whole point. So. We can do that here because hopefully you know that 9 is 3 to the power 2. So that's the trick I'm going to do here is 
3 squared, and then that raised to the power 2m plus 1. Okay, so now, uh, how can I combine these exponents? So it's just 3 to a power. Well, a power raised to another power, we're going to multiply them. So, so that's going to be 2 times the quantity 2m plus 1 is what that exponent rule says. And you have to distribute the 2 in there. So it's going to turn into 3 to the power m. And on the other side, 3 to the power 4m plus 2. All right, so now whatever value of m makes these exponents the same is going to be the solution of the equation because it's going to make both sides equal. So that means we can say m is equal to 4m plus 2. Uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, we want to get m by itself. I'm going to subtract 4m from both sides. That leaves you with negative 3m equals 2. If you divide both sides by negative 3, you will obtain m is negative 2 thirds. And by the way, it's always a good idea to uh, plug that into the original equation if uh, if you need to check it. Um, I'm going to do that here with my little mini calculator here. Oops. So we have 3 to the power negative 2 thirds. That's going to give you 0 0.4807. And then if we do 9 to the power 2 times negative 2 thirds plus 1, that gives you the same result. Okay, so anyways, let's look at this one now. This one is an extra level of tricky. There's a lot going on. Um, what I can tell is that all the numbers and the bases, like the 4 and the 8 and the 2, those are all powers of 2. Uh, so maybe we can write everything as 2 to a power. You could also figure out how to do it as like 1 half to a power probably. It, um, it might take another extra step or be a little weird. So, so my goal here is to write both sides as 2 to a power. They're probably going to be different powers and we want to see what value of y makes those those exponents the same. So, all right, so one-fourth, first of all. Well, the 4 is 2 to the power 2. If I want to have everything with a 2 in it, that will help. Um, I'm going to deal with the other side in a minute. I'm not actually doing anything to the left side. I'm just writing it in a different form. So, let's see. The the 1 over 2 squared, if you just want to write that as 2 to a power, that would be 2 to the power negative 2. That's what that uh, n negative exponent does there. You have that to the power 2y. And then you could combine those too, because if you have a power to a power, that's just going to be negative 2 times 2y is negative 4y. Okay, so we've got that. Now on this side, I want to try to do the same thing. I want to write everything as a power of 2. So that's going to be, let's look at the 8. The 8 is 2 to the power 3. Um, the 1 over 2 is 2 to the power negative 1. And then there's still that 3y there. Okay, so then you can combine the negative 1 and the 3y by because you have a power to a power. I'm going to leave the 2 to the power 3 alone and write this as times 2 to the power negative 1 times 3y is negative 3y. And then if you have 2 to a power times 2 to a power, you can add those exponents. So that's going to be 2 to the 3 minus 3y. 
All right. Hey, look at that. We've got uh, 2 to a power equals 2 to a power. The whole point is to find the value of y that makes this whole thing equal to that whole thing. So we can do that by making the exponents equal. So that means negative 4y could be 3, needs to be equal to 3 minus 3y. So we can get all the y's to the one side by adding 3y to both sides. That will give you negative y equals 3. And then you can multiply both sides by negative 1. And you'll get y equals negative 3. Uh, so, yep, yeah, that's the solution to that. And that one is a pretty tricky problem. So if you're able to do ones like E on your own, you are doing great. Um, more typical problems are kind of more like B or C, maybe D. Um, a is kind of a basic problem. All right, so up next you've got some... Oh, wait. Oh, no, we have one more example we need to do here. Sorry. Uh, we'll do that one... Let's do that one in the next video. All right, so I'll give you a little break to stretch, have a glass of water, and we'll look at a few more examples in the next video.